Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I'm going over a video that I did a few weeks ago, which was the Helping Hands video, um, which is the playing card holders. Um, the previous project was done, I, I showed you how to make these helping hands by hand. So it was a great project to do if you're sitting in front of the TV at night watching a movie and you just want to do a little bit of hand sewing. What I'm doing in this particular video is showing you how to make these helping hands on your machine. So I've been playing around with them for some time and I had a lot of trouble with the thread breaking every time I was uh, making these helping hands on the machine. So I gave up and just did them by hand. But I know that there's an easier way to do them or a quicker way to do them and one that's less pressure on your hands if you have trouble sewing. So. These are done by machine and they look no different to the ones done by hand, okay? So whether you do these by hand, and I'll pop the link up there for the one to make by hand, or you do these one by machine, in which case you will keep watching this video, they're both just as easy to do. And they're made with um, CDs or DVDs. So you can use any old music CDs, you can use um, the old rewritable CDs or DVDs that you get for your computers, your computer drives, uh, any old software discs, anything like that. So what, whatever you use, they're perfect inside these helping hands. If you don't have um, access to DVDs, you can always use a template plastic, a really strong thick plastic, cut that up to size or you can even use some cardboard, but it is a little bit more flexible. I actually played around with uh, a Paltex, which is a really thick, uh, a really thick, stiff wadding, and it's almost like cardboard. I tried doing making these with the Paltex. They don't look as good, um, aside from the fact that you've got to get your cut and your fabric wrapped around it perfectly. They don't turn out as well. So it's a coaster now. Uh, but yeah, look, if you can get hold of DVDs or CDs, they're fantastic to use in these helping hands. Stick around and I'm going to show you how to make these in less than half the time that it takes you to do them by hand. Okay, to get a template so that I can make it the, cut the fabric out large enough for this DVD, you can use a plate or in this case, I'm actually going to use a record. So this record is about an inch larger than the DVD all the way around. So you want to make sure that when you cut your fabric out and your wadding, it's at least an inch larger. So grab yourself a circle template that is about an inch larger than your DVD. And then get your fabric and your wadding. So I'm actually just using a really lightweight pallon. And this particular one is an iron-on. So I'm actually going to iron this onto my fabric once I've cut it out. You don't need to do that. In my previous video, I've just used any kind of wadding or, or blanketing. Um, but in this case, I'm actually going to use an iron-on pallon, a lightweight. All we need to do here is mark a circle all the way around the record. And I'm cutting out about four layers at the same time. So there's my circle and that is an inch larger than my DVD. So we just pin that in place and then we can cut this all out in one go. So my wadding has been cut out and then I want to go and get some fabric and I've just got a couple of pieces of fabric here. And we need two pieces of each. Place your circular template over the top. Now I've got just enough fabric for this particular project. I do like to use up all my scraps where I can. And we'll pin that one in place and then we can cut that out. Okay. 
Okay, so take your, if you're using a fusible wadding or padding, lay the fusible side up and your fabric over the top of it, take that to the iron and give that a press. Now, if you're using labels on yours, if you're sewing to sell, this is a good time to put your labels on as well. So just put your labels onto one of each piece. We don't need labels on both sides. So here's one that I've got made. Put your label on one side. We don't need it on the other side. I'm just going to show you the difference between the thread. So this is your normal polyester, Goodman polyester thread. So it's just my normal everyday sewing thread. This is a linen thread. And this is the top stitch thread that I've been using. So you can see the difference in the weight of the three threads. So if you go and use just your regular sewing thread, it'll break. When you pull the thread, it'll just break. Uh, the linen thread's nice and strong, and the top stitch thread, I, I cannot break that. I can't break the linen thread with my hand either. So you want to use something that's got really good weight, that is nice and strong, so that when you pull your threads and draw that fabric taut, it's not going to uh, snap the thread and then you have to do the job again. So that's a difference in the thickness of the thread there. It's quite a bit of difference. The first thing that we want to do is change the stitch length of the machine. So my stitch length is at 2.9. I'm increasing it to the maximum stitch length that it will actually go to. So that's at five. And then we want to disengage any back stitching that it might do as well, because we, we don't want our machine to do any back stitching. We want just our main threads or both of our threads sitting at the top of the machine. So I have my bobbin thread and my main thread sitting at the top and as I said we don't want this machine to do any back stitching or back tacking when we start sewing. So we're just going to do a quarter of an inch seam all the way around the edge. And I'm just using my hand as a guide to sew around. doesn't have to be perfect because this will all be drawn in on the other side of the DVD or CD. When we come to the beginning, we just want to go, we don't want to stitch over the top of that. We just want to go beside that, just a half a stitch. Bring the needle up. Take your work off and trim the thread. So you can see the two threads at the top there, they're not overlapping each other, nor are they overlapping on the back. If we, over, if we actually stitch over the top of it, you won't be able to pull your threads through. So all we need to do now is actually just pull our threads like that, and that will gather it up. So we can get our CD or DVD or if you've got a piece of template, plastic or cardboard, you can use that instead. With your fabric print side down, grab your DVD or CD. Place it, centre it over the top of your fabric. And then just grab the two threads on the wrong side of your fabric and give them a pull. So grab those two threads and we'll just pull that. And you can see that drawing in. Keep going until it's nice and tight. And when you've got it as tight as you can get it, and this is the reason why you need the good strong thread, just tie it off. And then we can just tie off the other thread as well. And we can trim those threads and we're ready to put our two DVDs together. So we just place the two together with the wrong sides facing 
and we'll grab a couple of buttons and we'll stitch this down. To put the buttons on, I'm using two strands of thread through my needle, so it'll give me four, four strands all up. Just gives a little bit more stability. So just come up through the center of the disc, one of your discs, grab a button, pop that on, put the two layers of your discs together, and center your button turn it around and grab another button and where the needle has come through just pop the button on there pull the thread through hold the two in place as central as you can and then we are going to line up the direction of the buttonholes as best we can with the direction of the buttonholes on the opposite side. Pop the needle in, come through the other side. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit. You can see the needle coming through there. Hold it taut and then go through and stitch your buttonhole together. So we'll stitch that through about three or four times. When you are ready to tie this up off, come back through the top, hold it taut, bring the needle up through the layers of cotton that you've got here. You can't go around the button like you would with a normal button sewn, sewn button project because it's too hard to get your needle in underneath. So we need to loop this at the top where the threads are. Bring your needle through and loop the needle through the thread. We'll do that twice and then pull that tight and then we'll go back through the other side and do exactly the same thing. Let's just bring your needle under Loop through twice, that'll ensure you knot it. Pull it, and on the back I actually like to do this twice. There we go. And that is your job completely done. I hope you've enjoyed this video it was a super quick project to do um, it time wise it took me about 10 minutes per helping hand to make by the time I uh, sewed the buttons and hand stitched all the way around these ones less than half the time so it's really really quick just to maneuver your fabric around the machine and do a really long stitch uh, and stitch them up I do recommend using a really good strong thread. So a top stitch thread, the Gooderman top stitch thread is fantastic. A linen thread, if you get it and you pull it and you keep on pulling it and it doesn't break, then it should be good enough for you to be able to use that. Uh, I wouldn't use a cotton, a waxed cotton thread. It's certainly not in the machine because the wax strips off the thread and gets caught in your tension disc. So it's not strong enough either. Definitely a good top stitch thread or a linen thread. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything else you'd like me to make, let me know. Pop a message in the comments down below and I shall catch you next time.